And that shot should leave no doubt as to where we are tonight. It's the Toyota Center here in downtown Houston, Texas. Well, the weekend obviously is in full swing, and so is the NBA. Hey, thanks for joining us on 2K Sports. I'm Kevin Harlan here with Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and our sideline reporter, the Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Tonight with us as well, the book of basketball author, Bill Simmons. Bill, great to see you. It's great to be here. Nobody is more impressed than my 11-year-old son, who can't believe that he's playing a video game and gets to hear my voice. When he hears my voice just yelling at him, normally. now he gets to hear me break down basketball. <laughs> but it's, it's kind wonderful. of fun, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah he likes it. Yeah. <laughs> GA, it's all yours. Well, guys, we know Russell Westbrook is fearless on the court and with a sense of fashion. Growing up around Los Angeles, he said, I felt like every day was the first day of school. That's how it was the minute I woke up. And guys, he's starting to release his own lines of clothing and accessories. I have a couple in my closet. Back to you. Influential with his taste for sure, David. Thank you. And Bill, much of what uh, P.J. Tucker brings to the table doesn't show up in the statistical sheet we get. Yeah, he's a playoff guy. Mm -hmm. If I was a GM, and maybe someday some smart team would hire you. Or some dumb billionaire, one of the <laughs> two. But I, I would just always want to gravitate to the playoff guys, the guys that you know in a series can raise it a level, can play physical, can kind of move depending on the styles. And he's one of those guys. Like, they used him as a small ball center against the Warriors, which isn't normally what he does, but they just want to have him out there. there go. He can fit in basically three different positions he can guard just about anybody he was guarding Steph Curry he was right. guarding Durant 50 50 balls I mean he's all over the floor chip on his shoulder yep. and like the classic guy who fell in the draft because he was an inch and a half too short which over and over again we keep making this mistake the guy happens oh, a lot. he's not six nine he's six seven or he's six six wow well, we shouldn't take him and then you end up with Montrez Harrow and PJ Tucker and all these guys so the opening lineup for the Suns Sharich and Aiton at the four and the five Rubio and Booker, they're the backcourt. And it's Bridges in at the three slot. And for the Rockets, Tucker and Capella are up front. Westbrook and Harden, the dynamite pair, they're the backcourt. And it's Green in at small forward. The Sun shooting their first free throw of the evening. throw drops for Aiton and you just have to be enticed by the skill set of Aiton a seven foot one behemoth who plays with a lot of physicality and skill on both ends offensive rebound or three Westbrook nope not that time nothing for two from the field it's stolen by Capella makes it off the glass when Capella plays with force inside watch out I like his intensity Westbrook against Rubio. We're about one minute into the first. Nice ball movement by Phoenix. Snatched up. That's the kind of D you need when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were all over him. Last game for Houston, they picked up the win against Toronto. Well, you look at the points they produced in that game, great adjustments on the offensive end. Well, it's really hard to stop them when they're in a groove offensively, and they were in a comfort zone all game long in that one. The finish was nice, but the setup was better. Yeah, G.A., the pick working to full effect before the stuff. And, you know, not enough help from the defense there to compensate. He gets a clean look, and that's exactly how you draw it up. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. They get Russell Westbrook. Making a concerted effort to attack. Rubio draws contact. He'll go to the line. And Bill, over a quarter of today's NBA players were born in a country other than the United States. The talent is that broad all over the globe. 
And Giannis was born on another planet. Mm -hmm. We don't know what planet he, he was. It was an Earth. I think he just got dropped from some satellite. Oh. Um, yeah, this all starts with I this. love it, too. Don't you? Don't you? I love the fact we've got players from Latvia and, and Greece and all over playing. What's cool about it is they, they all kind of have distinct identities and quirks. And one of the things that makes somebody like Doncic so much fun to watch is he's not like anybody else. Like, he's close to James Harden, but he's also that step back three that he was taking that he's been making his whole life other than Harden nobody was even really shooting it that way you know and I think there's an unselfishness with the European guys that is really useful for the way the Americans die. 100% agree. They really guys move without the ball mm -hmm. give and go and it's not just like clear out I'm up. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, one of the things I love about Westbrook is the ferocity with which he attacks the rack. When he's driving inside, he's trying to punish the defender and the basket. Now, here's Rubio. Looking at his point production, he averages almost 11 points a game. Clock at four, shoots the three. No good from Booker. They're one of four here to start looking to get into a flow offensively. Harden, no good. For Phoenix, they've gone just one of four to get this game started. Bridges passes to Sharch. Baseline J on the way, and it's off the back rim. No good. And, you know, right now they're just one for five. Rough start so far. The Suns trailing. The drive by Booker. Rubio in the corner. Pass to Aiton from deep. Phoenix keeping it alive with a new 14. Tries again. Rubio misses. For Houston, they've gone 3 of 7 from the field since we've gotten underway. Harden against Booker. Back to Harden. That one dropped for his second bucket. Mark him 2 for 4. Bill, you study pop culture. The 2K Esports League is, is a phenomenon right now, which is sweeping the country. Do you think that's going to alter the perception of gaming in any way? Yeah, I would say it has one of the best chances of any esports league to succeed because people just love basketball. Mm -hmm. And you can feel it there in the offseason. The shift in basketball content and the fact that it is now a 12-month-a-year sport for us, and now it goes from the playoffs to the draft to where are people going in free agency and then that plays out for a month and then something else will happen all of a sudden summer it's league, august summer leagues yeah, are summer coming leagues up. happening yeah. and then all of a sudden the season's close and and then you just kind of recycle and it's a 12 month a year sport <laughs> right now here's booker following the miss by russell westbrook bill i wanted to go back to what you were talking about with the 2k league and you mentioned how basketball has grown into essentially a 12 month a year sport for me, a 2K Esports League just makes sense. It fits into that. I think people love the players. I think they care about these athletes in just in basketball so much more than the other sports. And for me, it's really gratifying because I've loved basketball my whole life. And for a while there, I, I, when I grew up as a kid, they were tape delaying the finals. And, you know, it was like the second tier league. And now to see how popular it is and how much people love it. Uh, it's just, I feel like I was in early. I'm sure you do too. Absolutely. I mean, when Magic Johnson is a rookie and starting at center in yeah. game six in Philadelphia, yes. And, and it was tape delayed. And it was tape delayed. My beloved Boston Celtics won the 1981 title, and it was on tape delay in Boston. And I went to bed, and my dad woke me up to watch the game for me. And it's not even 40 years ago. So, uh, so I think the other thing that really helps with the 2K Esports League is that these guys play 2K, mm -hmm. the actual players. <laughs> right. They have... They care about it. They care about it. They have an incredible amount of time on their hands because they're too famous and they can't go anywhere. So they're in hotel suites. They're bringing with the PlayStation bringing their Xbox stuff. with me, right. with them. Uh, they're playing their friends. They're playing each other online. <laughs> and this is what they're doing all day. <laughs> Oh, fellas, that was a vicious two-hand monster slam. Guys, I don't think there was anyone who could have stopped him on that one. Well, guys, I'm glad they didn't try because I don't want anybody to get hurt out there. Here is Harden after the Suns pick up two. And the pass to Westbrook beyond the arc. The Rockets with another miss. 
Boy, just cannot buy a bucket, guys. I'll tell you what, that's a painful quarter for him, and it's painful for me to watch, too. And, Bill, when it comes to NBA awards, some people have said voter fatigue is a factor. W would you agree with that? You know, I actually think NBA awards are in the best shape they've been in because people are afraid to screw up, you know, that with the Internet and the accountability we have now. Accountability, and, uh, exactly. And we There's also, nothing anonymous about that. No. Yeah. And we have really good numbers and metrics now, and I actually think we make the right decisions with this stuff most of the time now. I didn't really see any egregious stuff last year other than the one person who voted Dwayne Wade for second team on NBA. You, I, uh, you, you get a vote, don't you? I do, and I take it really seriously. I do, too. Yeah. I feel the same way. And I like really the, care Our name it. is attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. I also, like, when I wrote my book, I really relied on the All-NBA stuff. Like, they're a snapshot of what happened that season. Good point. And here's Rubio following Russell Westbrook's three. And Rubio kicks to Sharich. The putback, and Aiton stays with it. Aiton's got his third basket of the night. Man, he's having quite the quarter, converting at a really high percentage. Here's Westbrook. Gets that one to drop. That's his third field goal in eight tries. And it's the fearlessness of Westbrook. It's really refreshing to watch. When he's deep inside, he just goes right at you. Now, here's Rubio. Out left to the wing. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. And going against Phoenix, their first meeting of the season. And while they swept the season series against them last year, making it pretty clear how much separation exists between the two teams. Yeah, Greg, I mean, one is a playoff team. The other, question mark, dot, 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 not so much. But things change, and you're only as good as your last win. So we'll see how they handle things tonight. Here's Westbrook following the basket by DeAndre Ayton. It's tipped. Tremendous at anticipating when shots are going up. Aiden is outstanding at protecting the rim. Here's Westbrook. An 11-point game for him in the win against the Raptors in Toronto. And also three steals. So he, he showed some grit and determination on the defensive side. And that one gives them a plus-five rebound advantage, Kevin. It's pretty clear they're dominating that area. They've come out with a lot more energy and effort so far. Now, here's Rubio. Eight points his last outing. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. Here's Westbrook trailing by four. Krills it from outside. Westbrook's got ten points in the game. Bill and now with Capella signing the long-term contract in Houston. Can he become their number three option on offense? I thought so initially, but uh, what we saw in the playoffs last year, they couldn't even really play him in the Golden State Series. He got played off the floor. And I, I think if you're just a screen and roll guy and that's it, it's pretty easy to get taken out of a series. So he's going to either have to learn how to shoot threes or figure out a little jump hook on the low post or something. He got sick in that first round against Utah, then got his health back, and it looked like he might be making a move, but uh, yeah, he never got a grip on that second one. So he yeah. Catching up on the changes for Houston. Tyson Chandler, who's checked in for P.J. Tucker. Cephalosha comes in for Green. Gordon's checked in for James Harden. And it's Rivers in for Russell Westbrook. The Sun shooting the sixth attempt at the free throw line tonight. Gets trailed by four. Outside Gordon. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the contact. It goes on Devin Booker. And Gordon very physical with the defense. Solid at creating chances for himself to get to the line. This is his first trip to the line tonight. Shooting two.
first free throw is good. And you know, when Gordon is healthy, he's extremely effective. I mean, he's a high motor player who strokes it well from deep, actually strokes it well from everywhere. All free throws good from Eric Gordon. Bill, you wear so many hats, writing, producing, and performing. You're running the ringer, which is highly successful. What role satisfies you the most? I would say working with young people and trying to help them get better. Hmm. I think that's the coolest thing you can do, especially if you feel like you've done some good stuff and accomplished some things and realized some dreams. Like, the next thing to do is just to, can you help other people get to where they should go? Well, a lot of this wasn't around when you and I were growing up. So yeah. what were your dreams? My dream initially was just to write a sports column that people read. That's and the what I wanted forever, yeah. And then um, the most satisfying thing is just not knowing what's next, but taking chances and hoping things are going to be fun and work out. Mm -hmm. You have to have a good team around you, and you have to have, like, six or seven awesome people that you completely trust who can help you do stuff because it's impossible to do everything yourself, especially if you're trying to increase the scale of what you're doing. And I think that even works for an NBA organization you know it's not like one person running everything I would say putting a good team around you is the most important thing the first one falls for Both free throws, good for Ubre. Yeah, you, you just have to be more disciplined. I mean, too many fouls and free throw attempts for the opponent. You know, it's one of the things coaches like least is giving away points. I mean, they've been a step late. They've been caught reaching. They've got to tighten things up at the defensive end. Now here's Gordon. 11 points for him in that last game against the Raptors in Toronto. Rejected by Booker. And now a chance to take a look at some numbers for Booker. And, guys, for a measure of how he's performing offensively, look no further than the true shooting percentage. There's been a steady drop in his last five games. Shoot two. And he's got to be scrambling now to get that feel back. And the first one at the line is good. Yeah, and Chandler, a difference maker defensively. The shot blocking, the controlling of the lane. He also gobbles up those rebounds. Houston making a switch here. McLemore has checked in. Chandler hits them both. And the Rockets building their offense around the three ball. What will uh, that approach look like if they ever want to make a championship run? There's got to be more to it than just the three-point shot. You would think. They've been playing the math. And the math says volume of threes and percentages. And eventually it's going to come in your favor. Do you believe that's the way to win? I think it's the way to succeed during the regular season. We saw it with Toronto, especially in the uh, Toronto-Milwaukee series. Toronto was playing those same averages, and then Van Vliet got hot, and a couple of guys started making threes, and all of a sudden they win that series. So that's a case of it did work. But I still think you need you need to know what you're doing when everything slows down. And we right. saw the Rockets two years in a row, like famously when they missed 27 threes. Mm -hmm. Those threes get a lot tougher when it's a game seven, you're tired, the other team's used to you, and the nerves are coming in, and that basket suddenly look a little smaller. Mm -hmm. What's your plan B? The Rockets again can't hit. Phoenix leading by six to the inside no good from Booker the Rockets shooting 36 percent in this first quarter trying to get their bearings fires from 14 and the basket by Gordon and Gordon so efficient as a score especially from the mid-range where he's almost automatic now here's Johnson Taking a look at his numbers, he averages about seven points a game. Ayton, the pass to Booker. Five to shoot. 
That's good, and it's his fourth basket of the game. He's a strong four for six. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Here's Rivers. Devin Booker picking up that last basket. Pass to McLemore. Jacks up a three. Knocks down the three ball. And he's not going to miss that sort of an opportunity from deep. The Suns leading. 115 left here in the first quarter. Passes it to Aiton. Chandler with the steal. And now here comes Gordon leading the break. Shoots from the elbow. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. Aiton's got the glass covered here tonight. 11 boards for him. Pass to Oubre for three. Sinks the three-pointer. Oubre's got five now. One of the things you've got to admire and respect about him is his aggressiveness at the offensive end. Always in attack mode. Now McLemore. He points his last outing. Puts it up from 12. That's a miss. He's made one and missed one. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. 20 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Gordon with it. He's certainly been a consistent piece of their offense, averaging about 14 and a half points a game. From deep. And no good on the last second attempt this time. And so it's Phoenix in the driver's seat. Up eight points at the end of the quarter. They've set the tone. They love their tempo. They're going to be very tough to stop. We'll get right back to the action when we return. A unique upbringing for Clint Capella spent years in a welfare orphanage in Switzerland he said he never imagined he'd come this far even as a kid I wasn't even dreaming about that far I would say that's even past my dreams I mean now I'm just living the moment trying to work hard uh, as hard as I can and just enjoy the present enjoy the present just an inspiring story, Greg. It gives you perspective on why you should be grateful for everything you have. Kevin, without a doubt, Capella's upbringing helped shape him, and, and the hard work he continues to put in is really admirable. And hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far, halfway through the first half in this one. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here, the scoring breakdown for the Suns. You know, guys, we've really seen them do a lot of damage in the paint so far. And also, how about the willingness to attack the basket and challenge the defense here tonight? The Bruce and Gordon make the backcourt. Chandler out there with Cephalosha. And it's McLemore in at the three spot. So that's who's on the floor for the Rockets. And so it's Houston with it. It's a 10-point game. Six to shoot. Outside Gordon. There's the three. The Rockets with another miss. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebounding has certainly been, at, been at, the, at the center of it. But it's been good on a number of levels. Oubre can't get it to go. Well, they'll be happy with that look, even though it didn't fall. You know what? That's a confidence shaker for him, though. I mean, that's a shot he expects to make every time. The Rockets perpetually knocking on the door. At what point, though, Bill, do you think their window will close? Um, I think that point happened in May of 2019. I think they had two years to win the title where everything was lined up for them. 
2018, they're up 3-2 against the Warriors. The Warriors are tired. They seem like they're fading. They can't close. I think the key for them is the difference between being a regular season team and a playoff team. They're a great regular season team, but the playoffs every year become more and more complicated, smarter, more you got to come up with a plan C, a plan D, a plan E as the series goes along. And their plan A is kind of what they ride with. They get tight, the crowd gets tight, things slow down. What's your plan B? And they haven't been able to figure that out. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. Johnson surveying the floor. And Booker kicks to Baines. Good. And a nice assist from Booker. Baines has got his first basket. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Well, when you look at the assist total, heck, they've been clearly the better team. Oh, how about the floater there? Nice drop. And so it's Johnson who brings the ball up for Phoenix. And after this one, they're home against Minnesota. That'll be the first of four played at home for them. Oubre can't get it to go. No other way to put it. Just a poor shooting performance for him. But luckily, his teammates have picked up the slack. Good quickness on the catch and shoot. Gordon giving the defense no time to react off the pass. Here's Johnson after Eric Gordon's bucket. Johnson with it. Picked up by Rivers. Chandler with the steal. Here's McLemore. He gets it to fall. That makes it just a single-digit lead. McLemore's got five now. They're consistently finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Pretty clear. It's smash mouth basketball. Pound that thing inside. Now here's Johnson. He has five. Well, he's just zoned in. I mean, in most cases, taking quality shots very much within the flow of the offense. And here's Gordon. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. And he has not been on his game here. He is forcing a lot of shots, and the team is suffering because of it. It's time for him to focus on getting his teammates involved. Houston, a whole new five on the floor. And for the Suns, Sharch has checked in for Kelly Oubre. Mikhail Bridges comes in for Devin Booker. And Ricky Rubio subbed in for Johnson. And here in the second quarter of action, as we approach four minutes played, Green inside the three-point line. No good with the wing jumper. Suns leading by 11. And it's Rubio that time on the assist by Sharch. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. Houston's gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Here's Westbrook. The Rockets again can't hit. For Phoenix, they've gotten just over 50% of their shots to drop here in the second quarter. They're 5 for 9. In the corner, it's Bridges. Back to Rubio. Over Harden. Rubio misses. And he's trying to shoot his way out of it. You know, they have the lead, but honestly, I, I think it might help if he'd be a little bit more selective tonight. They're going to have to come up with a better matchup. This guy just too much speed. The dish to Bridges. Charge outside. Three-pointer, another three for Phoenix. You know, it's obvious that Sharich has really improved his outside shot. I mean, he had a good stroke coming in, but it's gotten better. He's a legitimate threat to score from there. Now here's Westbrook. 12 points for him. Harden scanning the floor. Launches it. Kept alive by Houston. A second chance effort. Capella. Yes, that goes in. Cabello's got his second basket of the night. His hard work on the backboard really just has given them more opportunities to score. And there's the pass to Kaminsky. Shoots over Tucker. Kaminsky misses. And there's the call on Dario Sharch. 
That is his first foul of the game. Rockets trail by 12. Outside Westbrook. And nice defensive position there. Rubio about as steady as they come. They're kind of smelling plays out. The Rockets have hit all four of their chances so far in this one. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. Uh, you know, he was born in Switzerland, guys. Clint Capella's had quite the journey to NBA stardom. I mean, started his pro career in France, and he was a late first-round pick in 2014. So he gets them both. Now, here's Rubio. At the top of the key, Bridges. Just five to shoot. Fires from deep. Rubio misses. Rockets trail by 10. Harden the pass to Green. The Rockets again can't hit. Phoenix has gone two or three when they've stepped beyond the arc in the second quarter. And it's Rubio penetrating. There's Kaminsky. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Rubio's got three assists in the game. Houston's got nothing but zeros from long range in the second quarter. All of four. And it's stolen by Ricky Rubio. Here's Bridges. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. On the night, he's gone two for two at the stripe. First free throw is good. Some changes for Phoenix. Andre Ayton's checked in for Aaron Baines. And it's checked Diallo in for Kaminsky. Good on both. Now Westbrook. He's got 12. Here's the three. Hits it from three-point range. Westbrook's got five points now in the quarter. Man, you got to admire how easily Westbrook takes over games. I mean, an offensive juggernaut who is tenacious when it comes to scoring. Now, here's Rubio. Over to the wing. Bridget for three. Westbrook pulls it in. And so Westbrook will bring it up for the Rockets. They trail by 11. Harden, no good. For Phoenix, they've gone 7 of 15 from the field here in the second quarter. Just under 50% shooting. And there's Aiton, and that's good on the assist from Rubio. Rubio's got four assists in the game. Houston's gone 1 of 6 from three-point land in the second quarter. Less than 20%. But they've continued to let him fly. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, over the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about seeding playoff teams 1 through 16, regardless of conference. Now, taking the top 16 teams is a tough sell, especially for owners whose teams are in the relatively weaker Eastern Conference. 
of taking eight teams from each conference and then cross-seeding earlier than the finals is something that does seem possible down the road. The reward for fans might be a finals matchup with the two best teams in the league. Kevin? Interesting ideas. David, thank you. On defense, Phoenix, following the basket by Russell Westbrook. Oh, and the jam by Westbrook. And you know Westbrook has an outstanding vertical. Once he gets to the launching pad, rim, beware. Now, here's eight. 17 points for him last game against New Orleans. And don't forget about the four blocks. Just a big all-around game, particularly on the defensive side. Here is Harden. Here's Capella. No good there, and that would have cut it to single digits. Let's the three fly. That one doesn't go. And Houston the other way now. Outside Westbrook. And Ricky Rubio gets the whistle that time. That'll be his second foul of the game. And that's foul number two. And maybe you don't sit him at this point, but you really have to be careful to not pick up another before half. Green with the ball. Now guarded by Sharich. The three. Bridges with the board. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Stolen by Tucker. Four on three as they bring it up. Bobbed up there for Green, and it's Green with the jam. Tell you what, you give him room to take off, and he will posterize you. You'll be in a picture that you don't want to be in. And the Suns call time. They're trying to stem the tide here. Yeah, you know, they had to do something, anything to stop this run. You can't just let it go on any longer. Booker, he's checked in for Phoenix. And now let's take a look at the number of second chance points these teams have had over the last month. These guys never give up on a possession. The Suns fifth. And they've really put an emphasis on offensive rebounding. And, guys, it's paying off. The second-chance points are coming in bunches. Phoenix leading by eight. Rubio outside. Kicks it to Bridges. A three ball. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got nine rebounds now tonight. Harden inside the three-point line. And that comes off the assist by Russell Westbrook. Eight points for James Harden. And Harden takes a lot of pride in being a hard matchup, a tough cover. I mean, he takes no time in shooting once he gets the pump. Westbrook against Rubio. To the paint. It's stolen by Capella. Teardrop shot. Tucker dishes to Green. And even after two offensive rebounds, they just can't get the lid off. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. Here's Ayton. They could use a bucket, and that's two points on the layup. Ayton's got 16 points. A towering presence on the offensive glass. Ayton uses his height well to keep possessions alive. The Rockets shooting their seventh and eighth attempts at the foul line tonight. And he makes the first. They've hit every one of their free throws here in the second quarter. Very important when you're trailing. Houston making some changes. Tavo Cephalosha has checked in for P.J. Tucker. Gordon comes in for James Harden. And it's Rivers in for Russell Westbrook. No good on the second free throw. And, you know, Green is known for his instant offense, no doubt about that. He's a guy that knows the coach is counting on him to let it fly and let it fly off and the basket by Rubio and they keep hammering away at him inside forcing the ball into the paint we've got 118 left to play here in the second quarter well Bill I know you've got to run marvelous to have you on the program wish we could do it more often let's do it right now I don't have to run can you I stay yes you can All always right. stay I don't want to leave you have a free ticket here I, anytime I, I, I you want to stay please the microphone's always open thank you <laughs> and Clark you know what Bill will always give you a great point of view and you know what I think he needs his own barbershop talk show Kevin I mean he's done everything else in media go barbershop on him Bill 58 seconds left in the first half of the game 
Rivers against Rubio. And it goes down two points. Rivers has got four points now in the quarter. Here is Rubio. He's got eight. Booker outside. There's 38 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Bridges inside the three-point line. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Rubio's got assist number five here tonight. Rockets trail by 11. Rivers with it. Taking a look at the scoring numbers right now, he averages about nine points a game. Bridges with the steal. And Rubio kicks to Bridges. Banked in off the glass. Bridges has got eight. Attacking the defense with the pass there, Kevin. Rubio, the great vision. Then no hesitation on the delivery. Here's Gordon from deep three-point range. And so it's Phoenix looking at a 13-point lead heading into the next quarter. A look at the field goal percentage numbers tells the story of what tough defense they're playing today. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks very much, Ricky. Bench has always been an issue here. When they produce like they did in the first half, how does that help you? It's amazing. That means like we are we have a deep bench and then a lot of work from the staff, from the from the everybody of the of the team, like doing uh, extra work and winning games. Trying to change the culture around here. Thanks, Ricky. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks so much, David. And we'll step away briefly, but get you right back out here for the start of the third quarter after this break. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back to 2K Sports, everybody. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. Let's talk about that first half. A tremendous start for DeAndre Ayton. He had 16 points, two assists, and two blocks. Let's hear from you, Shaq, on the Suns. Well, the offense is running on all cylinders. Guys are focused, executing, not playing outside of themselves. That's why their shooting percentage was so high. See it up there already in the stratosphere. Anyway, they're mixing things up, which keeps the defense scrambling. And over to Kenny. What did you think about the Rockets? Well, the way I see it, they're losing this game because they're being out-rebounded. You can't give up this kind of differential and expect to remain competitive. So what do you do? You commit more guys to the glass, guards included. You make it a priority that if you do ultimately lose this game, it's not because you didn't rebound. And that should do it. With the second half about to begin, let's send you back to Kevin Harlan. Go back to Kevin Harlan. Go. Go over there. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Well, you look at Russell Westbrook in this game, he has been everywhere. No problems fighting his way to the rim in this one. A lot of points in close. Yeah, you know what, guys? They gave him too many free runs to the hoop in the first half. I think they've got to be a lot tougher on him. Body him up. Be physical with him. Well, we've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. Greg for the Phoenix Suns with a franchise-high nine-year playoff drought. There is pressure on this team to find their way out of that long rebuild. And their moves on draft night, they raised some eyebrows. They've got some young talent, but, but can new coach Monty Williams turn them into a winner? Long-suffering Suns fans certainly hope so. Getting underway in the second half, here's the five for Monty Williams. Bridges and Sharich make up the forwards. Rubio and Booker, they're the backcourt. And it's Aiton in at the center, locking down the middle. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Moving it around, eight of their last ten coming off assists. And, Greg, you know nothing makes a coach happier than selflessness on the basketball court. And so Westbrook will bring it up for the Rockets. 15-point game. Oh. 
Yep, that one goes. Westbrook's got 21 in the game. And a minute played as the second half gets going. Rubio taking his time here. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. It's going to be on James Hart. And, guys, the stellar development of Devin Booker continued last season. Still a firecracker on offense and took strides to improve his shot selection and, equally as important, his decision-making. And he knocks down the first one. And Greg, with Booker in his progress, you really see it in his playmaking. And that is what the Suns want from him long term. They see him growing into the same vein as a player like James Harden, someone who can carry the load offensively and still make others better. Both free throws good from Booker. Already a very confident player. Knocking down those free throws only fuels that. And here's Westbrook. He's got 21. Off target with his three. And they're one of four here to start the second half. Here's Bridges. Good. And a nice assist from Booker. Ten points for Mikael Bridges. They are just killing them on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. you got to play with some physicality in the paint. Here's Westbrook after Mikel Bridges' bucket. Westbrook finds Green. Here's Capella. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. Man, it's nice to see Capella get that deep position inside, and then he's able to draw the foul as he forces the defense to whack him. And, you know, you look at the way Clint Capella's offensive role has expanded the last few years. He's great in the pick and roll as an option at the top of the key, and he's actually seeing more and more touches as a finisher at the rim. The next step in his development being a back-to-the-basket scorer. First one falls. And with Cabela Clark, the numbers don't lie. He is a big factor on offense now. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, his hands have gotten better. That's not something you can always see in a big guy's improvement in his hands. But he's gotten better in catching and finishing. Um, I love the way he moves and is always ready for the pass. He catches some tough stuff in traffic. And um, he gives you all of this at the offensive end with high-level defense, too. Mark, it seems that guards are rebounding now more than ever. Uh, what do you make of that trend? You know what, Kevin? I think it's a function of how the game is played. More and more teams play small ball. So they really don't have a big guy out there or a traditional center out there. You may have guards and wings, and oftentimes your tallest guy might be 6'8". So it makes it important for guards and everybody to rebound the ball. So I think you see more guards getting more rebounds because of teams playing small ball as a function of the three-point shots importance in the game. Just under two and a half minutes into the third quarter now. Now here's Westbrook. He's someone who's a factor on any given night, averaging more than 22 points a game. And Clint Capella is going to pick up a foul. That is his first foul of the game. McLemore's checked in for Gerald Green. Oubre's checked in for the Suns. Tyler Johnson comes in for Ricky Rubio. Phoenix leading by 17. Johnson outside. Charge in the corner. Booker outside. Shoots over Tucker. No good from Booker. Houston's gotten off to a very slow start from three-point range in the second half. They're 0 for 4. They get it again. McLemore goes back up. The Rockets again can't hit. 
Boy, he's got to be disappointed in the result there. I mean, the defender really didn't make any impact at all. Booker finds Sharks. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. That's on Clint Capella. Sharich is highly engaged and very good at keeping the defense on their toes and making them commit the foul. This is his first free throw of the game. Oh, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one drops. And, well, whatever your feelings may be on the Rockets, you, you can't deny their offense works. Yeah, it does work, really. I mean, I agree with you. Second in offensive rating last year, fourth in effective field goal percentage. This team knows how to produce points and be efficient in doing so, and they stay with their approach. They don't let teams take them off their game plan. Sharich nails them both. We're still waiting for that first miss from the line this half. 100% since halftime? Come on now. I'm not sure this lead's going away anytime soon with that kind of marksmanship. No luck for him this half after being outstanding from outside the arc in the first half. Kaminsky, the pass to Oubre. Left side, Sharich. Six on the shot clock. Here's Booker, and Capella sends it back. This is the real strength of Capella's game now. Outstanding at using his length and athleticism to block shots. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Sharich. Rockets trail by 19. Now Harden, eight points for him. Lob pass to Capella. An emphatic LU jam. And that's a double-double for him now. 10 points and 11 rebounds. Westbrook against Johnson. He feeds it to Oubre. It's good with the assist that time from Johnson. Johnson's got three assists in the game. And here are the Rockets now. And stolen by Booker. And Phoenix pushing it up now. Johnson outside. In the corner, it's Oubre. No good on the triple. And for Houston, they're shooting 33% for the night. That's a big thorn in their side right now. McLemore dishes to Westbrook. No good on that one. Good D by Booker. So hard, actually impossible to cut into the lead when you have a guy struggling this badly. Last season, we saw Kelly Oubre get traded to the Suns. That was a surprise success for both him and the team. Oubre came in and gave the Suns that defensive spark they so desperately needed. The long arms, he can get in the passing lanes, and he plays with tremendous energy, and they love him. Shooting two. He's off on the first. Look, we've talked about footwork, but a player's hands, how he catches, how he passes, the use of his hands are huge. And there are a couple guys out there that are great at that. Kawhi Leonard has got some mitts unlike any other in the league. I mean, he's not that tall. He's long-armed, and his hands are humongous. That ball looks like a tennis ball in his hands. And <laughs> not only are they big, they're good. He's active with them on defense, and he's very strong in how he handles the ball offensively. You know, I think about a guy in terms of maybe not size, but really good hands. Jokic, his hands are phenomenal. And that's just another mistake. I mean, they, they've got it on autopilot, and they look totally dejected. Suns leading by 20. Johnson outside. He kicks it to Booker. Oubre outside. Good. And a nice assist from Booker. 
Oubre has got six in the quarter. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. If it's working, keep working it. That's what I say. Keep the pressure on them. And so it's Harden bringing it up for Houston. Dishes it to Westbrook. Over Johnson. And that one's good. Westbrook. Westbrook's got 23 points. The Suns have gone 5 of 9 on field goal attempts since halftime. Westbrook against Johnson. Booker the pass to Johnson. Let's it go from 14. It's good on the putback. Baines has got his second bucket. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Guys, that's putting it mildly. I mean, they've been absolutely dominant. Westbrook finds Harden. It's not going to go for him. You know, he's just not taking good shots, not taking smart shots, forcing up a lot of low percentage junk there. Booker in the corner. Basket number eight for him on 13 tries. That's 62% so far. And obviously his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. You know, that's how it goes with him. I mean, his hot streaks, guys, don't last minutes. They last days. Now here's Westbrook. 23 points in the game. Harden inside the three-point line. And it's been a tough game for him offensively. And the shots just continue to say no in terms of falling. Booker outside. To the middle. He had stolen by Capella. McLemore with the ball. Five points in the game. Pass to Westbrook from outside the arc. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Capella. Now that we have a second, let's take a quick peek at the rebounding numbers for the last handful of seasons for Capella. He's really made that a focus of his game these past few years, and it's paid big-time dividends for him. Uh, he's become a much better rebounder, and it's increased his value as a player by leaps and bounds. Johnson against Westbrook. Passes to Baines. Shoots over Capella. Rebounded by Capella. Harden against Booker. Here's Tucker. The Rockets again can't hit. Phoenix has gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Capella against Johnson. Feeds it to Kaminsky. It's blocked. A rare rejection that time from Tucker. Using that long reach, though, and times it perfectly. And it's Westbrook. That time on the assist by Harden. And now it's up to 25 points for Russell Westbrook. Suns leading by 23. Johnson outside. And the foul called on Russell Westbrook. That's foul number two for him. Houston making some changes. Tyson Chandler, he's checked in for P.J. Tucker. Gordon comes in for Ben McLemore. And it's Rivers in for Russell Westbrook. And the Suns making a change here as well. Shaq Diallo, he's checked in for Aaron Baines. Now here's Rivers. Devin Booker missing his last shot. The offensive rebound. Capella shooting foul. As the whistle blows, he'll shoot two free throws. And, you know, Capella has a big body, Kevin, and knows how to use it as he draws contact from the defense on his way up. And a look now at how the offensive approach has been going here so far for Phoenix. Anytime you get as many points in the paint as they have, you know you've got a good thing going, and you just want to keep it going. And you've always heard of guys being in a zone shooting, but you can be in a zone passing the basketball, and we've seen that tonight as well. First free throw is good. And a boon it was for the Rockets to be able to keep Clint Capella. A great fit with the team and, and gives them exactly what they need on the interior. Tabo Cephalosha has checked in for Tyson Chandler. Ricky Rubio checked in for Phoenix. And Greg Capella, who was taken near the end of the first round back in 2014 in the draft, has developed well during his time with Houston. And Capella's game has really taken off in the last few seasons. He looks to be a double-double machine for this team for the next handful of years, and that is exactly what they need.
Mind the lane. Mind the lane. One shot. Free throw, good Booker. And Clark, throughout your NBA career, you always wore number 33. How'd you end up picking that number? Well, it goes back to my idolization of Lou Alcindor at the time, who is now known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Um, he was the first big, graceful guy I saw do a little bit of everything in his days at UCLA. And then I digested all kinds of books and stories about him and just uh, really admired his... Uh, work on and off the court because he wore 33 I chose 33 and Phoenix making a change here Bridges checks in here's Gordon he's got six four on the shot clock they get it again Cephalosha's shot is good it's never easy trying to keep him off the glass he's an absolute beast down there so it's Rubio bringing it up for the Phoenix Suns One a little long. The Rockets really having a tough go here. Down low, here's Cephalosha, and Cephalosha with the jam. And, and that's the kind of lead pass we've come to expect from him. Rubio against Rivers. Oubre, left side. Over Gordon. Oubre can't get it to go. The Rockets shooting 33% for the night. That's a big thorn in their side right now. And I don't know if he needs a rest in this quarter or what, but he needs something to get off the snide. Unloads from nine. He squares up and sinks it. Oubre has got eight here in the quarter. And after really leaning on that three-point shot in the first half, seeming like they're uh, just getting away from it here in the second. More of the shots coming from the interior. Now here's Gordon. Back to Harden. And a missed layup. Nothing seems to be going his way this quarter. To me, it appears he's starting to lose his composure a little bit. We'll see if he can regroup and get back into a better rhythm. It's stolen by Capella. And the foul's on Shek Diallo. That's his third foul of the game. Yeah, oh man, that's it's close, but, you know, didn't get on balance quick enough. Yeah, and as quick as players are at this level, in this day and age, I mean, you've got to be perfect in your anticipation to draw the charge. Green, he's checked in for the Rockets. And the Suns making a change here as well. Aiton's checked in. Now, here's Green. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around nine and a half points a game. It has not been his game so far. I mean, he's trying his best, giving great effort, but little has gone his way. Here's Ruby. And stolen by Diallo. Here's Ayton. Plays it up off the glass. Ayton's got 18 points. And the sheer muscle of Ayton. Sometimes he's impossible to stop on the way up. 43 seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Rivers against Rubio. Rivers kicks to Gordon. Green deciding where to go with it. Kicks it out to Gordon. This one for three. It's hauled in by the Suns. Diallo's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Inside. Oh, trying for it. Back to Ubre. From past the arc. Rebounded by Cephalosha. Cephalosha's got six rebounds in the game. And so it's Devin Booker making highlights for Phoenix. It's been an excellent game for him offensively. He's got 21 points and counting. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Let's hear what Mike D'Antoni was going over with his team moments ago. Come on, guys, come on, play our game. Play our game. Get in, Thor. Play our game. Come on now, let's go. Let's go. We gotta settle down. Well, you can tell he doesn't think his team is playing like themselves. 
and they aren't. They, they just seem a step slow at this point, and Coach D'Antoni is just trying to energize them. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. We've got Rivers. Cephalosha is out there with Nene. Then there's Frazier. And it's House in at the three. So that's who's on the floor for the Rockets. Yeah, coach's pet peeve there. No box out. Those are free points you're giving away. You got to work harder on the glass. Now here's Frazier. Lays it up and banks it in. Frazier's got his first bucket of the night. No defensive pressure at all. I mean, that's not going to get it done against him. Suns have gone one of three from the field to start the fourth quarter. Pass to Ayton. Clark, take us inside the halftime locker room in the NBA. Oh, oh the power on that throwdown! Yeah, just such strength on these finishes. When you foul Aiden, you really have to hit him to prevent the basket. And when you watch DeAndre Aiden, you really are just floored by how he moves. The amount of speed and agility he has for a player as solid as Aiden is doesn't come around very often. One shot. Free throw drops for Aiton. And those physical attributes of Aiton are so imposing. Greg, who does he remind you of? I mean, for current players, you see a bit of Embiid and how they both move so fluidly for seven-footers. From the past, I see a bit of David Robinson in his game. Now here's Rivers. And it's still a rare sight to see rebound numbers like the ones he's had tonight. Boy, he has put in some major work. He's earning his pay, for sure. Well, you know, last season for the Rockets, not as strong as the season prior. 53 wins and fourth seed compared to 65 wins and the number one seed in 2018. Uh, still face the same fate in the playoffs, though. Not able to overcome the Warriors. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. Clark for the Rockets. That was the fourth time in the last five years they've lost to the Warriors in the playoffs. And it's easy to see why this team has become a bit obsessed with beating the Warriors. They've been unable to do it in four or five meetings. Uh, team is still in a good spot to compete. Um, I think they just need to tweak just a touch to maybe get over the hump. He's perfect from the line this time. The last couple of years, Clark, we've seen a couple of Hall of Fame level players go on these farewell tours on their final year in the NBA. What a, what a great way for fans of opposing teams to honor these terrific stars. You know, I was a little bit mixed on how I felt about the farewell tours, but these two were handled so beautifully, and there have been others that have been handled great. It gives the fans an opportunity to um, express their feelings for some of the greats in the game, and that's... Um, Heartwarming for all of us, I think. Yeah, you and I were just talking about the way Kobe and Wade were terrific in their tours. Two. The first one falls. And so House nails both of them. A little over a minute and a half of the fourth quarter gone now. There's the pass to Jerome. Johnson with it. Frazier covering. Johnson can't hit. And even without that three ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. Frazier scanning the floor. The feed now to Nene. Shot clock at five. Here's Rivers. Got a hand on it. 
Here is Carter. Down low. Ayton. And Ayton throws it down. And the all-around offensive game Ayton has is just fantastic. Capable of scoring in many different ways. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. How's the pass to Rivers? Mark, do you think the NBA should consider expanding the use of replay? I know you personally like to slow the game down, but you also want the calls to be correct. Well, it depends on the circumstances, Kevin. Uh, I like the fact that replay is available and it helps enhance the ability of the officials to get calls correct. Expanding the use of replay, though, has to be done very judiciously. There are a couple of areas. Goaltending would be one where you take a look to see if that's the case. But I think flow of game takes priority over trying to get every single call right just because you think technology gives you a chance to do that. Well, he had one three-pointer in the first half, but so far in the second, he's come up with goose eggs. A look at the clock, a little under three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth. Pass to House over Johnson. The shot by House is no good. Phoenix has gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. And he lobs it up toward the rim. The slam dunk by Diallo. And how about the communication between teammates on that alley-oop? And that's what you need to pull that thing off. Boy, both ends of that play, guys, were fantastic. And it's the Rockets with the ball. The Suns getting the bucket. To the paint. Here's Sapolosha. Bucket is good. Very well-executed pick to give him all kinds of space to get that one off. Mark, should the NBA consider widening the court to even out the value of those corner threes? You know, that wouldn't be a bad idea, Kevin. But I also like the fact that there's a deep three at the top and on the wing. And then you've got a little shorter three if you can get to that corner. Widening the lane to make that three more in line or symmetrical with the um, deep three at the top. I kind of like having a uh, short corner three. I agree with you. Clark, do you think we in the media overemphasize championship rings when talking about an individual player's legacy? Yeah, I think when you talk about an individual player's legacy, a player can be a champion without a championship ring. I know there's another level of champion which includes a championship ring, and sometimes it gets distorted in my estimation because an individual only has so much impact on a team being a championship team. There are no individual team champions. Teams win championships. Being a key player or a role player on the championship team is certainly worthy of recognition and being held in high esteem, but I don't like to see championship caliber players being diminished in the court of public opinion because they didn't win a team championship ring. Like Stockton and Malone. Exactly. You could go down the list a number of guys who just weren't, for whatever reason, able to get the ultimate in a team championship, but had championship Hall of Fame careers. Now here's Frazier. And the jam by Sephalosha. Yeah, just a simple one-hand flush. I think he got a few more inches on his vertical by going with the spike. Yeah, I agree with you. That's what it looked like to me. I mean, he was way up there. Here's Jerome. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. It's on Tyson Chandler. Shooting two. And he makes the first. Clark, a lot of fans ask us what qualifies as a legal screen versus a moving screen. They feel there's a lot of gray area there. What do you think? 
Well, I think there is some gray area because the problem you have, one of the problems is a number of veterans out there have become really masters at getting a little extra into their screen, which borders on illegal and many times is. So the league is doing a pretty good job of clarifying. And if you're moving your lower or upper body to help a teammate with your screen, then that should be called. And most times it is called as illegal. A hip check, a shoulder, any of that to set a screen is illegal. And it's slammed in by Bridges. Well, so often we see this transition buckets off turnovers. And we know turnovers are painful and costly. You get loose with the ball on one end and get punished on the other end. Here's Westbrook. The Suns getting the bucket. A three-pointer off the mark. And you know what? If you're the defense, you got him right where you want him. Let him keep shooting those threes because he's been brutal in this half. Well, a, a promising start last year for Mikael Bridges. The offense was there, but it was his impact defensively that has really gotten most people's attention. A lot of great tools for a young player. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And that one falls for Bridges. And with Bridges and his defense, great coaches speak very highly of his basketball IQ. And that is why, as a rookie, he would often get assigned to guard the toughest perimeter player. Good size and, and great instincts make him one of the best young defenders on the team. All three throws good from Bridges. Clark, here's kind of an interesting uh, perspective question for you. How much of making it to the NBA is talent? Uh, how much of it is the work you put into it? Kevin, if I were to give this a ratio, I would probably say 65% talent, 35% work ethic, wow. because you have to have a level of unique giftedness to be an NBA player. Many can work really hard and not be NBA caliber. So I think there's, um, I, I tilt that 65-35 talent to work ethic. And so here is Houston. Outside Westbrook. Shoots over Rubio. Another miss by Houston. No matter what looks they get, they just can't convert to stop this run. And, you know, they've got to be careful because this is when the team concept breaks down and guys start playing hero ball. Pass to Kaminsky. But Trey. Rockets with the rebound. You know, even though they're on top in this one, you'd like him to be better out there because he's capable of being better. It sure would make things a lot easier, too. Whether he's attacking the basket or squaring up from long range, Westbrook is always dangerous. And here's Rubio following Russell Westbrook's three. Stolen by Tucker. Green inside the three-point line, and that comes off the assist by Russell Westbrook. Westbrook's got his third assist on the night. Westbrook against Rubio. To the left side wing. Kaminsky kicks to Rubio. Just four to shoot. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And it was made clear early on to Ricky Rubio that the Jazz were moving on from him. But Rubio quickly finds a home in Phoenix. Three-year deal for Rubio, who is a good fit with the Suns. Having a real point guard on the team like Rubio should be a huge boost. Oh, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And that one falls for Ricky Rubio. Hey, Clark, the NBA moved the presentation of the MVP award to after the conclusion of the finals. Do you like that? Yes and no. I think you have two separate awards. You have you could have a playoff MVP or a finals MVP, which we have. 
And then you have a regular season MVP. The MVP is for the body of work done during the regular season. So I think there should be a clear separation between the two, quite honestly. So, uh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest, Clark. A shot by Frazier, no good. He has to make that one. I mean, you have to make the defense pay when they slough off of you like that. Basket, good. Johnson's got his first two points. Terrific assist that time by Rubio. Houston's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. Pass to Cephalosha. And taken away by Johnson. One-on-one -on -one here. Here's Booker. That's in there, Johnson with the assist. Booker's got 15 points in just the second half. Attacking in transition, the most consistent way to generate easy looks. Yep, exactly. And if there's any opportunity for early offense, you've got to push it and push it every time. Here is House. Devin Booker picking up that last basket. House kicks to Frazier. To the inside. Here's Nene. Another shot. Makes it off the glass. Nene's got his first points of the night. Look at the intensity of Nene. One of the strongest guys in the game. Phenomenal at scoring the ball inside. The pass to Booker. Carter outside. Clark, the two-way contract, a relatively new invention that gives players time in both the G League and the NBA. I love it, Kevin, because it's another pathway for those aspiring to be NBA players to have a legitimate shot to make their dream come true. The G League is just a notch below the NBA in terms of overall talent. And so I love the fact that players who desire to be pros can have a pathway to get to the NBA by being part of the um, G League as well. And these G League players are having an impact, aren't they? They're making a difference on a lot of teams. 40% of the players in the league have spent some time in the G League, Isn't so it something? speaks to the um, impact the G League has on the NBA. Now here's Booker. Here's Rubio. Kicks it out to Booker. Rubio against Frazier. Pass to Carter. Five on the clock. 144 left here in the fourth quarter. Oh, a nice tip in to salvage the points from that missed shot. Yeah, and those second chance points can add up. And if you're the defensive team, it just kills you to give up baskets like that. Here is House, defended by Booker. Cephalosha. Free throw good, Cephalosha. But for a while now, you and I were just talking. We've had a rule that a team cannot go without a first-round pick in consecutive years. Could it be time to lift that restriction? I certainly wouldn't mind discussing lifting the restriction, but I like it as it is on the books because it does lend itself, I think, to competitive balance. And that's important in the strength of a league. A disappointing trip to the line there. Even though it was just one miss, now is not the time to be missing those. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for the Suns. This was a team performing to its uh, fullest capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many will soon forget. And on the other side, one that I, I think most will try to forget. And they took charge when it counted and will be notching their ninth win overall.
and asserting themselves up front here, guys. They'll be taking the front end of a four-game season series between these two. They, they've got to feel good about getting the upper hand tonight against the Rockets. And, you know, looking back in all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for DeAndre Ayton. Now, he was a problem on the glass today, relentlessly crashing the boards and came away with a bushel basket full of rebounds. And it's just competing, you know, giving your best when it matters most. Yeah, you know, once they got victory in their view, a huge injection of energy and a great run to finish it off. There's 31 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Passes it to McLemore. Here is House. Back to McLemore. It's deflected, and he gets it back. Carter left side. And so it's Phoenix easily grabbing this one. This one was over well before the final buzzer. The fans were waiting for something to get excited about, Greg, but they never got it. They sure didn't. I mean, they just rolled to this win. They made it look really easy. What an efficient performance at both ends. And that'll do it, folks. For Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan along with our terrific 2K Sports crew thanking you for tuning in. So long.